Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all honor, glory, and praise to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakhah Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the whole fully elect. It's the brother Isaiah with the Pittsburgh GMS camp. Coming at you with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakhah Kodash. Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. And, um, you know, this is like a lightweight response, but not really, you know what I'm saying, to uh, this thing that's going on right now with this dude, Seed of Israel, where he's talking about uh, he's destroying the cedars of the Father in under four minutes, or four minutes or less. And the title of this lesson is going to be something to the effect of Endless Genealogies in the Time of Trouble. You know, and uh, I began to watch Elder Yashawama's uh, lesson on this whole thing, this response to Elder Manatha Zakwa's lesson, which I didn't get a chance to check out yet. Um, and I, I did click on the brother, that not the brother, I clicked on this nigga's video, this nigga Seed of Israel, and watched a little bit of it. And, uh, you know, as I was thinking about what angle I would go at, you know, the spirit hit me as I just dropped my wife off at work, that what okay here it is the time of Jacob's trouble as Elder Yashawamba mentioned and you got niggas going into these, these these different things of you know things that are not really edifying okay and, 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 and bringing up contentions and strifes you know the scriptures talk about them that uh they talk about them that that are doting over words and, and strifes of words all right so this guy you know, he's doting about stripes of words and everything, but he's cutting himself. All right, his name cuts himself, the seed of Israel. He's cutting his own self, man. All right, but nevertheless, you have these endless genealogies, okay, going into these things which don't really edify. All right, when at the end of the day, the time of Jacob's trouble is coming and we need to be uh, exercising solidarity. All right. Now, you have to ask yourself a question. Do these guys even believe in Israelite foreigners? Okay, they must not believe in the Israelite foreigners because you have Israelites who look like the other nations. How do you think they got that way? Did they just pop up one day and they just look like Moabites and look like you know Ammonites and look like Hamites and look like Edomites? No, what happened was uh, some the seed of Israel, okay, the man, which carries the seed, all right, ended up having sex with an individual who is either from another nation or looks like another nation, all right? And what happens? The seed comes out, and as generations go on and go on, the seed begins to look like the nations of which their mother is from, all right? So this is the type of things that you have, all right? But then you got these guys, Okay, with all these uh, 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 these naysayers, with all these different things they want to say to try to confuse people and switch up the doctrine. At the end of the day, okay, let's look at the science behind it. Now we're not here, we're not here to really to focus on science so-called, falsely so-called, okay, or to uh, to speak with enticing words of wisdom of, of, of man's wisdom. But let's just literally think about the science behind it. Whenever they depict a sperm cell. It wiggles, it moves, it does all these different things. But what about the egg? What about the female's egg? Does the female's egg do anything? The female's egg is useless and uh, not useless. If it does not get populated, <coughs> it is useless. If, if, a, if a sperm cell does not go into the egg of a woman, then it gets literally evacuated. That's why they have a menstrual. That's what their menstrual cycle is for, is to evacuate the old, unfertilized egg and to prepare a new egg to receive seed. That's literally the purpose of, uh, of a monthly uh, menstruation period, okay? So, do men have menstruations? Do men evacuate their seed when it's not used? No, that's not how it works. A man can hold his seed, okay? You have eunuchs that hold their seed their whole lives. And it doesn't have to be evacuated. And that seed is still viable. Okay? It's the oxygen that kills the seed. So nevertheless, man. Nevertheless, a 
recording these all, you know, oxygen kills the seed. I ain't gonna, I don't know, I don't pretend to know everything about the science, but we know that they freeze the, why do they, why don't they freeze eggs? Or do they freeze eggs? Do they freeze eggs? They freeze, uh, they freeze sperm. Sperm donors. Okay. Now maybe they freeze eggs. I don't know. Like I said, we're not all about wisdom, the man's uh, knowledge. You know, in Salaki, I kind of got thrown off because you know every time I'm on the road, man, it never fails. It never fails. Try to do it in transit. You got demons. You got people that using their turn signals. People don't know how to drive. Let me, let me get past this nigga. You know, it's just, it's just you know, increasingly uh, chaotic out here. Lock it. But nevertheless, you know, I'm gonna have to look into that. I, I don't believe they freeze eggs. You typically hear about them freezing sperm cells. All right, so I just wanted to do this correction. Uh, so I looked it up, they do freeze eggs, <coughs> but the point still stands that <coughs> unless an egg is uh, fertilized, then. Uh, it gets naturally the natural process is for it to be excavated or evacuated out of a woman's body okay the same thing does not apply for the seed okay now you can't have one without the other you can't have uh, a child without an egg but the difference between an egg and a uh, sperm is is that the egg does not contain a uh, living uh being so to speak okay I also want to point out that when you watch a video which I just watched of uh, the journey of uh, the, the sperm cell to the egg all right the sperm cells doing most of the work is swimming through different layers and you know different things where a lot of them die all right, and, and uh, you see them wiggling and, and writhing around and moving. Okay, even when you look at those elements of, of things, all right, the sperm cell has the more activity in it. All right, which will lead you to believe spiritually that it contains the life. Okay, and, and this is backed up by the scriptures. Okay, whenever it talks about uh, a person being of the seed of their fathers. Okay, it's always tied to the seed of the fathers. It always says this over and over, okay? The seed of David, O thou son of David, all right? Yeah. The woman's not mentioned in those different things in most cases. And that's just the facts. It's not anything, uh, whatever you want to make out of it. It's just the facts, all right? All right. So that they can uh, uh, artificially inseminate a woman right and get her pregnant at a later date okay so nevertheless man the seed comes from the man okay you know the elder uh, from what i heard of his video is breaking it down very beautifully all right but 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 is this really what we need right now okay people throwing seeds of doubt you know here you got the seed of israel throwing seeds of doubt and i even remember, uh was, was thinking about and then he don't even use the uh paleo hebrew he uses uh something else he was calling moses moshe you know you taking you taking your knowledge from uh in the way you pronounce things from your oppressor all right from these uh from these heathens that have taken over your heritage Talk about some moshe it's masha all right it's masha that's how you pronounce moses name and then you spoke about well his wife was technically what was her name zippor she was technically from the seed of abraham and so on and so forth Bro, it's about the chosen seed. If you ain't of the chosen seed, you a heathen. That's how it goes. Edomites are heathen. They're Hebrew Edomites, but they're heathen. Okay, it says just in the scriptures tell you that just because you are of Abraham's seed does not make you a part of the chosen seed. Don't it say that? So what are you talking about? Well, technically she was a Hebrew. Was she an Israelite? Because according to what y'all teach, you have to be two Israelites. Like this nigga demon coming behind me. Slow your ass down, nigga. I'm not going that fast. According to what y'all teach, you have to be two Israelites. You see? So, how you gonna try to say, well, technically she was Abraham's seed? If the scriptures literally depicted and tell you just all that are of Abraham's seed are not the chosen seed just because you are of Abraham. 
tells you that literally in the scriptures, but I can't even tell you the exact location. Okay? But the promised seed is Abraham, Isaac, and then Jacob. You see? When you try to uh, uh, try to do damage control. But like the elders say, all right, you're just playing off of people's emotions. All right, off of these women's emotions. And you're doing it for views. That video had like what? If I'm not mistaken, it had either five or 8,000 views, man. You know, it's guys like this that, that, that as the elder mentioned, don't show their face. You know, play off of emotions to uh, to to, uh, to use their, to, the angles uh, of their videos is, uh, based off of emotions. All right, for the sake of getting people to uh, to uh, side with him when he's going off. Okay. Right? And not to downplay women, you know, necessarily, but when you get arguments like this, you have to you have to bring out the facts. And the facts is that no matter what egg, what, what soil, you know, what mother earth, so to speak, you use, the seed is still gonna dictate what springs forth. The seed is gonna dictate what springs forth. Alright, until you fertilize the egg, just like you would fertilize the ground then the plant is not going to grow. All right, you plant the seed, you fertilize it, okay? And then the earth brings it forth. And that's how it works with human bodies. We're made of the dust of the ground, and so it's not no coincidence that the Lord made the birth cycle, okay? The whole process of, 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 of uh, conceiving and all that, very similar. Plant the seed, it gets fertilized, you know, and fed with the nutrients and different things, and then come, uh, out comes the seed. The plant, the grown plant. All right. So, you know, that's, I mean, it's not a whole lot on that, but uh, I want—I do want to get this precept since I'm pulling up. Let's grab it. About Abraham, right? Oh, that went up right there. All right, let's get this. And the elder just did post another uh, video about the meaning of seed. See what pops up when I type this in real quick. Come on now. Con, Romans 9, it literally tells you, Romans 9, all right, and, uh, mm. I'm going to just start at verse, uh, 6, it says, not as though the word of the Most High have taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel, neither because they uh, are, they are the seed of Abraham are they all children but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So to try to use that argument that a Zipporah or whatever Moses' wife's name was, was technically a, a, a usable female because she was, uh, oh, Abraham's seed. No, man, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter as much to, to try to do all that, man. Y'all just want to make a carnal argument to try to prove some point that doesn't exist. All right? No matter what woman that seed goes into, if the father is an Israelite, that baby is an Israelite. Okay, you're using Esau's you're using Esau's uh, mental, you're using Esau's way of thinking to uh, to speak about a, a biblical subject. All right, that's not how that works. Now we can use different examples here and there, but you're ba you're siding with the enemy's knowledge. When you say, oh, yeah, it depends on the mom and this, that, and the other, you know, that's not what that's going into. And as the elder mentioned, and I want to briefly mention, when you when you read that in, in the book of Tobit, and it says to, to keep your, keep thyself from all whoredoms. Well, what was the whoredoms? OK, what what is whoredom? Uh, what does that go into? Well, uh, Hosea's wife, she was actually a, a, a whore. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, uh, it said get thee a wife of uh, of whoredoms, right? Let's go to that. 
And Lord willing, this lesson is edifying, you know. Which the elders really did a good job, you know. But uh, the camp, our camp head out here uh, was like, we all got to do something on this. So I'm going to just touch on the Lord willing, it's edifying. Hosea 1. Okay. And 2 says, the beginning of the word of Yahweh by Hosea. And Yahweh said to Hosea, Go, take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms. For the land have created, have committed great whoredom, departing from Yahweh. So this is how you create, uh, you do whoredoms. From departing from the Lord. Okay, from serving other gods. All right. You see? Let me look. I don't think there's no more in it. Let me see. Yeah, there's, there is something I want to read. I'm going to skip to the next one. Yeah, uh, Hosea 2 and 2 says, Plead with your mother. Plead, for she is not my wife, neither am I her husband. Let her therefore put away her whoredoms out of her sight and her adulteries from between her breasts. Lest I strip her naked and set her as in the day that she was born and make her as a wilderness and set her like a dry land and slay her with thirst. And I would not have mercy upon her children, for they be the children of whoredoms. For their mother have played the harlot. She that conceived them have done shamefully. For she said, I will go after my lovers that gave me my bread, and my water, and my wool, and my flax, mine oil, and my drink. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up thy way with thorns, and make a wall that she shall not find her paths. Okay, and this is speaking parabolically of Israel. And she shall follow after her lovers, yet yeah, those other gods... But she shall not overtake them. She shall not. She shall seek them, but shall not find them. Then shall she say, "I will go and return to my first husband." For then was it better with me than now? For she did not know that I gave her corn and wine and oil and multiplied her silver and gold, which they prepared for Baal. It's showing you they. I thought it was a she. I thought it was a singular person that was being spoken of. Well, no, it's her and her children represent Israel. Okay, Israel and the, and, the, and, the, uh, the children of Israel. Okay, therefore will I return and take away my corn in the time thereof, and my wine in the season thereof, and I will recover my wool and my flax, given to cover her nakedness. And now will I discover her lewdness in the sight of her lovers, and none shall deliver her out of mine hand. I will also cause all her mirth to cease, her feast days, her new moons, and her Sabbaths, and her solemn feasts. And I will destroy her vines and her fig trees. Whereof she have said, These are my rewards that my lovers have given me. And I will make them a forest, and the beasts of the field shall eat them. Now, let me see. And I will visit her, and I will visit upon her the days of Balaam, wherein she burned incense to them, and decked herself with her earrings and her jewels, and she went after her lovers, and forgot me, saith Yahweh. And that's what Israelites did to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh they, they forsake him and forgot him and served other gods. This is the whoredoms that he's being warned of abstaining from. Because a lot of times what will happen is when you make a when you make a marriage with these heathens, they will teach those children the ways of wickedness of their powers, of their gods. Okay, if you give them an equal footing as a as a as a woman of Israel, as a true marriage, then they're gonna feel entitled, emboldened, and have certain liberties to teach your kids certain things. That's why you're not to make marriages with them. Now, if you had them as concubines, they would not have such rights to to take uh, liberty over what your kids would learn and something. They they have a diminished status, a far diminished status, where they're low, that they ain't they ain't running shit. They ain't out here telling no kids what's going on. You know, she's just a concubine. She ain't no wife. She's just there for the king's pleasure or whatever the case may be. All right. So that's the difference between having an actual marriage wherein there had to be respect. There had to be an agreement between these two, uh, these two parties of, you know, making a marriage and so on and so forth. If you went to war against a people and destroyed that people and you took you a concubine of the people that was left of the captives. What rights does she have? You just killed her mom and her dad and you made her cut her hair and, 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 and pair her nails and, and these different things. Is she going to get to then tell you what you are supposed to do with your kids? That's not how that works. Okay. Therefore, uh, Hosea 2 and 14, therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her. And I will give her her vineyards from thence. All right, and let me see. Let me keep going. Uh, da, da. Take a 
take away the names out of her mouth in a day. Really, so really, you can read the whole of Hosea too, and it just goes into, and it's all parabolically speaking about Israelites, man. All speaking about Israelites. So when you read that chapter, that book of Tobit that he went into, the whoredoms that it's telling you to uh, to abstain from, all right, is the whoredoms of how these different women would would be uh, would want to teach the children their ways of their gods, okay. And so, uh, in order to avoid that, you were not to marry them and have make marriages with them. Okay, that's what that's going into, and it even tells you that in um, in another chapter. You know, that to give not thy daughters unto uh, their sons, nor thy sons unto their daughters, for what they shall draw away their hearts from Yahweh. So you weren't to make marriages with them. Okay, you weren't to make marriages with them. All right, because of that those situations, so you know. But as far as if you popped them and they had a baby or something like that, then so be it. You know, it wasn't no, it wasn't nothing. No, it wasn't no big deal. And that and that's how the Lord has uh, has it these days. Okay, when you got the children of Israel scattered into these different lands. All right, and they just so happen to look like these other nations. You see, they look like the other nations. Why? Because a seed, a man of the seed of Israel, popped the, the native women, and had kids, and then he, and then his his son did the same thing, and then his son, and his son, and his son, and so they all came out looking like the other nations. All right, but guess what? They're still Israelites. And to say otherwise, to say that you need an Israelite woman to make an Israelite, is taking away the speckled bird of Jeremiah 12 and 9 is taking away the fact that every kindred multitude tongue and nation are actually speaking about Israelite foreigners who look like the other nations is I will gather thee out of all the nations where I have scattered thee okay if you're if you're there in those nations <laughs> you know it's only a matter of time before you sleep with their women okay that's just how it is okay especially if you were uh, forcefully taken there in captivity all right. So anyway, that's pretty much all I got on that. And Lord willing, that was edifying. I want to give all honor, glory, and praise to Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shai by Shem, Rakan Kadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the holy elect. With that, I want to say Shalom, Wa Baba Ba. Shalom.